Greetings in Christ. Welcome to our Eucharistic celebration, brothers and sisters, who join us in worship here at the Diocesan Shrine of Jesus the Divine Word in Christ the King Mission Seminary. Today is Monday of the fifth week in Lent. Our Mass Presider is Reverend Father Emmanuel Minguito, SVD. Our celebration will now begin. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God has truly loved the world that He gave us His only Son. May this love of our God be always with you. And with your spirit. I can only presume that a lot of disappointments and sadness from most of us, especially those affected by this GCQ recently announced, especially in the NCR and the nearby provinces that we cannot go to Mass physically once again. But let us that this dishearten us. And we hear, and let's hear the voice of the Lord saying to us, Be not afraid. When He was walking on the sea during a storm. Because he always is present with us. Let us then continue to trust in Him, especially as we come near to the holiest days for us Catholics, for us Christians, the Holy Week. We will hear words of forgiveness from our God, from our Lord in today's Gospel. Let us hear His words of forgiveness too at the beginning of this Mass. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whose wondrous grace we are enriched with every blessing, grant us so to pass from former ways to newness of life, that we may be made ready for the glory of the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. The assembly condemned Susanna to death. But Susanna cried aloud, O eternal God, you know what was hidden 
and are aware of all the things before they come to be. You know that they have testified falsely against me. Here I am about to die. Though I have done none of these things with which these wicked men have charged me. The Lord heard her prayer, and she was being led to execution. God stirred up the Holy Spirit of a young boy named Daniel, and he cried aloud, I will have no part in the death of this woman. All the people turned and asked him, What is this you are saying? He stood in their midst and continued, Are you such fools, O children of Israel? to condemn a woman of Israel without examination and without clear evidence. Return to court, for they have testified falsely against her. Then all the people returned in haste. To Daniel, the elders said, Come, sit with us and inform us, since God has given you the prestige of old age. But he replied, Separate these two far from each other, that I may examine them. After they were separated one from the other, he called one of them and said, How you have grown evil with age! Now have you passed sin come to term, passing unjust sentences, condemning the innocent and freeing the guilty although the lord says the innocent and the just you shall not put to death now then if you were a witness tell me under what tree you saw them together under the mastic tree he answered daniel replied your fine lie has cost you your head for the angel of god shall receive the sentence from him and split you in two. Putting him to one side, he ordered the other one to be brought. Daniel said to him, Offspring of Canaan, not of Judah, beauty has seduced you, lust has subverted your conscience. This is how you acted with the daughters of Israel and in their fear they yielded to you. But the daughter of Judah did not tolerate your wickedness. Now then, tell me under what tree you surprised them together. Under an oak, he said. Daniel replied, Your fine lie has caused you also your head, for the angel of God waits with a sword to cut you in two so as to make an end of you both. The whole assembly cried aloud, Blessing God who saved those who hope in him. They rose up against the two elders, for by their own words, Daniel had convicted them of perjury. According to the law of Moses, they inflicted on them the penalty they had plotted to impose on their neighbor. They put them to death. Thus was innocent blood spared that day. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures, he gives me repose. Beside restful waters, he leads me, he refreshes my soul. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. He guides me in the right path. For this, his name's sake, even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. 
with your rod and your staff that give me courage. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Please rise and we honor the Holy Gospel. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to john glory to you o lord jesus went to the mount of olives but early in the morning he arrived again in the temple area and all the people started coming to him and he sat down and taught them then the scribes and the pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand in the middle. He said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such woman. So what do you say? They said this to test him so that they could have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. But when they continued asking him, he straightened up and said to them, Let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he bent down and wrote on the ground. And in response, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. So he was left alone with the woman before him. Then Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, no one, sir. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, do not sin anymore. My dear brothers and sisters, this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Praise Lord, to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus, Christ. Jesus Christ. Let me take this off. Graham Staines. I don't know if the name is familiar. Was an Australian Christian missionary with a group who were ministering to the lepers in Odisha, India. That's where he met his wife Gladys, and eventually when they got married, 
they had three children, two sons and a daughter. On January 23, 1999, Graham, together with his two sons, I don't know where the wife and daughter were, must be home or something, coming from what we call as the Christian camp, must be a gathering or fellowship of Christians in that part of India. And uh, so driving home, maybe he felt drowsy, sleepy, it was so cold, it was winter, it's January, remember. And he just parked on the road, by the roadside and told his sons, let's go to sleep. Maybe take some rest and then go on with the journey. Suddenly a mob appeared. headed by one Dara Singh who has always not only criticized but condemned these Christians for forcible conversion according to him which was of course have been denied, has been denied always so together with many men there were about 50 of them they torched the vehicle of course roasting pardon for the word, the three occupants, Graham and his two young sons of 10 and 7. Of course, this was condemned strongly by the people of India, civil leaders, religious leaders, journalists, etc. And what came out was, of course, one of the biggest peace marches in India and an awareness of what these people, the Christians, were doing for the lepers, pitiful lepers in Odisha. So that became known to them. The wife, the widow, great Gladys, in an affidavit she presented to the commission that was handling the case, said, far from my mind is the punishment of those who killed my husband and my sons. But I am interested that they repent and be reformed. I guess hinting at that the court be uh, more pitiful to the, uh, to the killers. Right after the verdict was handed down, after some years after this 1999 incident, she was interviewed once again and she said the, the decision was death penalty. Eventually, of course, commuted to life imprisonment for Dara Singh and his accomplices. Gladys said, I have no bitterness for them, but only forgiveness for them. She eventually won the highest civilian award given by the Indian government and also won the award Mother Teresa International o Memorial International Award for Social Justice. She continued with her work among the lepers. Wonderful, admirable woman. Telling you the story, I'm sure, but also we could connect to the very gospel that we have just heard with this adulterous woman. Let's see some parallels. First, the attitude of Jesus. Right away, what could be seen very clearly in our Lord's attitude was pity, sympathy, or I guess the stronger word would be compassion for the woman. Contrast this with the scribes and the Pharisees. For them, this woman is nameless. This woman is, has no feelings. This woman is surely guilty. Just a case that they will use a tool, an instrument to be used against Jesus for him to be condemned. 
they found the thrill of authority because this woman has broken the law. She should be condemned. She should die. Our Lord? No. The thrill of forgiveness. So pity, compassion. How easy it is to say, stone her. Patayin yan. Batuhin yan. Or maybe incarcerate him or her. Ipreso na yan. How easy it is to judge. But for the Lord, just like glad stains, forgiveness, no bitterness. Secondly, our Lord shows to us a very important thing in forgiveness. Second chance. A second chance. Our Lord has constantly preached the gospel of a second chance. Yes, there were broken laws, broken hearts. But our Lord shows his interest. And what is that? The possibility, the future of any person. Each and every one of us has a past, but we also have a future. When we condemn somebody to death or condemn him or her, totally, we are just condemning the person not to go on to his or her past or his or her future. Our Lord is very much interested in the second chance. We still have chance to reform. Again, the words of Gladys things that they be reformed. And thirdly, it was no easy forgiveness that our Lord gave to this woman. I can safely presume that once they were left, the two of them, all the others having left in shame, must have talked. She must, he must have talked to the woman and said, He didn't say, Tina, okay, go on. We can. But rather, he must have said, You know, it's not the end of the world. You have a chance to reform and change. Change your life. Go and sin no more. That surely is not easy forgiveness but a challenge that is posed to the woman. And that is a challenge that is posed to each and every one of us who, are, who have sinned. That we can always have a chance to change. A final point. When our Lord said, He who has no sin cast the first stone, I believe that what He was saying to the one, to people gathered at the time was, look at this woman. She is just like you, a human being, a person. Who among you has no desire at all? Wrong desire, lustful desires. Who among you is not guilty at all? If you have none of those, then go ahead, throw that first stone. People around realize here is a fellow human being needing forgiveness, understanding, pity, and compassion. That's why they left in shame. This is the greatness of our God's forgiveness for all of us. As I was saying, He always gives us a second chance. He also poses us a challenge. But more than that, He shows to us that we are human beings, all of us, that we need to understand each other, forgive each other, take pity on each other, not condemn each other. This is our loving and forgiving God. We can do no less, but imitate Him. Of course, this can only be done with His help and with His grace. Amen. Let us all rise.
remember the mercy that Jesus extended to the adulterous woman. Let us turn to him in prayer, reassured that we will be shown mercy also. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That those alienated from God through sin may experience the loving mercy of the Savior, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may refrain from passing judgment on others, but look instead at our own lives in the eyes of God, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That all those weighed down by hardship and worry may realize that God is never far away from them, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord may strengthen those who have been unjustly accused, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the deceased may find happiness and peace in God's embrace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, help us to be forgiving toward people who, break, who treat us badly. May we show them the same compassion that your Son, Jesus, extended to the woman caught in adultery. We make our prayer to Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. dear brothers and sisters that we and this a sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church grant we pray O Lord that preparing to celebrate the holy mysteries we may bring before you as the fruit of bodily penance a joyful purity of heart we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received the heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. <laughs>
you. Therefore, Almighty Father, you are blessed through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves have turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled to the Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he will cry at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, <clears throat> on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us his floods of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us to sacrifice a perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and his saving banquet graciously to endow us with your very spirit who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May we make your church so he a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. May he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Onesto, our Bishop, all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with all the saints, with Saints Arnold and Joseph, blessed Maria and Josepha, with our, and the SVD martyrs, with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, the mighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Gathered together in God's, because of God's love, we call now together on our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, in heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. In heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, bread and, and forgive, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days. And with the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Grace will grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. We now share the peace of Christ to everyone. Peace to you peace all. Be you. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold, our loving and forgiving God, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am, I am not worthy, worthy that you should, should enter under, under my roof, but, but only say the word, in my soul shall be healed. act of spiritual communion my jesus i believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament i love you above all things and i desire to receive you into my soul since i cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally come at least spiritually into my heart i embrace you as if you're already there and unite myself fully to you never permit me to be separated from you amen and to the whole world. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strengthen their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted, may they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them, grant them eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all, to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all these to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, Holy Mother God. Do not despise our petition and our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Our Lady, help of the sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael, the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod. Pray for us. Saints Arnold Johnson and Joseph Prynadamets. Pray for us. Please be seated for some announcement. Statement of the Diocese of Cubao on declaring two weeks lockdown. My dear faithful in the Diocese of Cubao, this is the time for prudence, courage, and love. With the rising surge of the case of infection swirling around us, the Diocese of Cubao has, declared, has decided to declare a lockdown of its parish churches for the period of March 22 to April 4, 2021. This is to encourage the faithful to stay home and keep them safe. We will reopen for public worship on April 5, Easter Monday. Again, following our existing and perhaps even strict safety protocols, voluntarily closing our places of worship at the highest point of our liturgical year is heartbreaking. But we also open our eyes to a situation that puts many of our faithful at risk. Numbers are surging and scientific data show that unless drastic interventions are done, this number will not decline anytime soon. If anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet shuts up his bowels of compassion from him. How does the love of God abide in him? Together we must embrace an act of self-denial for the sake of many of our brothers and sisters. Your bishop, parish priests, religious leaders, relevant ministries will exert all possible efforts to find the best and most fruitful ways for the faithful to celebrate Holy Week on safe online platforms. 
This is the season of great love. For me, loving our neighbors at this time means keeping them safe. Be comforted that only our church doors will be shut. We keep to our heart what Pope Francis says. Jesus says to, our, to each one of us, Courage, open your heart to my love. You will feel the consolation of God's who sustain, God who sustain you. I continue to pray for your protection and healing. Yours in Christ, most reverend Honesto Antioco, Didi, Bishop of Cubao, attested by Reverend Father Frederick Edward Simon, Chancellor. We invite everyone to join our online Stations of the Cross every Friday during the season of Lent. This will be live stream. Thank you. Our online Holy Week schedule are as follows. Holy Monday to Wednesday, March 29 to 31. Lenten recollection during the 6 p.m. Mass. Holy Thursday, April 1, 2021, 8.30 a.m. Lords, 5 p.m. Mass of the Lord's Supper. Shrine is closed at 9 p.m. Holy Friday, April 2, 2021, 8.30 a.m. Lodz, 9 a.m. Station of the Cross, 3 p.m. Veneration of the Cross, 6 p.m. Stabat Mater and Burol Jesus, Holy Saturday, April 3, 2021, 8.30 a.m. Lodz, 8 p.m. Easter Vigil, April 4, 2021, Easter Sunday, Regular, regular Mass, Mass Schedule. For more information, please check the Diocesan Shrine of Jesus the Divine Word Facebook page. Thank you. The Mission Communication Foundation INC is inviting you to attend the Seven Last Word on April 2, Good Friday, 12 to 3 p.m., to be aired at ABS CBN and Capamilia Channel. Please rise. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us bow down our heads. Set free from their sins, O Lord, we pray, the people who call upon you, that living a holy way of life, they may be kept safe from every trial. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may the Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go to love and serve our God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.